I want to make a combination in this demo of uh, a loose background and very detailed features and fur on this fox head here. This is a 200 pound paper and I'm just wetting it. I've done the drawing with a, a B pencil, mechanical pencil with a B lead in it. And this is a, I'm doing this from a photograph my cousin sent me. He lives in Gravenhurst and he uh, took a picture of this fox in his backyard. Just going to start it with a bit of burnt sienna on this real wet paper. Mix a tiny bit of cobalt blue in it to just get some of the grays. It's going to dry much lighter than it looks here because the paper is so wet. Yeah, just keep going back with a bit of a uh, bit of burnt sienna. Just let it kind of flow with soft edges. Keep that furry look. Avoid getting paint into the white parts of the fur. Now it's a bit of uh, cobalt blue here. And uh, it's going to touch a little bit of um, ultramarine in it too where I want it to go a little darker and this is still wet from the first wash first wetting Uh, a little bit of green down in this corner because he's laying out in the garden. And I don't you know, don't want to have too much realistic detail in the surrounding area. This is a combination squirrel hair and synthetic. This brush. And it has a nice spring to it, even though it's a, it's not a pointed brush. It's kind of a almond shaped or filbert, I think. It was some kind of a nut. I think I got a little too much burnt sienna on that ear. Looking back at my reference, mop that up a bit. And less paint there too. Now I want a pointed brush or a round brush for a little more detail and I want this to be fairly fairly dry so the brush will uh, kind of split and it'll leave, leave sort of a hair like track when I dry brush it because the paper has to be dry now and if it's if it's not giving me enough um, enough of a dry brush effect. I'll turn it on the side to get a single line every once in a while. You have to kind of uh, babysit the brush here to to get it to just cooperate and play with it. 
an experiment to get you get it to behave, providing you with some of these hair-like lines. I'm not going to do every single hair in this demonstration. Once you get the idea, it'll be plenty. It's boring to watch too much of this. I think you get the idea. Now I'm going to work on the eyes, and I'll need an even smaller brush for that. Just still working with burnt sienna and uh, cobalt blue. But if there's too much graphite, and I put a lot of pencil on this, uh, you can press it without smudging. It's going to be a little bit difficult to get it up after the wet, uh, the water's gone onto the paper. It literally turns the paper into a glue that'll hold the graphite. I just wanted to get that extra off so it doesn't smudge. But the paint will uh, obscure that and, and you won't really see much of the pencil lines once I'm finished here. It's kind of fussy work, but uh, you get the idea. You're constantly referring back to the reference photo. So you really need a good picture to work from. One that you can blow up and study the eyes. It's worth spending a little extra time just rendering the uh, that, those features. And if you need to lift a bit, I have a cut off old cheap oil painting brush that I use as a scrubber and just wet the paint and move it just a little bit and then wipe it off. And you can go back and and make all your refinements with this. Get the finished.